Hey guys, this is Will, and I'm here the first look and unboxing at the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro. Just arrived from Best Buy, the base 999 model with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs solid state, and the i5 for 200U uh, as well. So yeah, we're just going to open it up and make sure that we can upgrade it the same way that you can upgrade the previous model. I've been using the 11.6 inch that you can pick up refurb at Newegg for 600 or new with the Haswell processor for 799 on Best Buy's site and probably others. That one you can upgrade the RAM and you can upgrade the solid state. It also has a full SD slot so you can put in another 128 for pretty cheap or more if you want. They changed the packaging up a little bit on this, which is not that exciting, but nonetheless, it's worth noting. They did not change up the packaging on the Haswell version of the 11. And here it is. Second iteration of the best Ultrabook convertible ever to hit the market. So the SD slot I'm a little bit concerned because it doesn't have that little protector that normally comes with this guy. So let's make sure that an SD, dang, sticks out so you won't be able to leave in extra storage. That is a bummer. Also downgraded the full HDMI to micro HDMI, which is also too bad. Let's see what else they did mess with our friend here. It definitely feels way better because of the tapered edge. Uh, these are actually the same weight even though this is a 13 inch screen and this is or 13.3 and this is 11.6. Uh, the resolution on this is obscene. It's like 3200 by 1800 which actually concerns me a little bit. In some videos I saw you could just you can't read text and I, I've tried a 1080p machine before and it's can be difficult to use actually. Okay, well we're gonna find my charger and plug this guy in. Yeah, we'll open up the new one. We'll finish the unboxing. So your manuals, behind that you have the same charger with the same charging style as the previous version of the Yoga. And that goes in this USB shaped, oh no, that is actually a USB port. Yep. They switched it to the left. I think it's actually always been on the left in a 13 inch model, which is nice because you can plug in the charging port and the HDMI cable and a USB all on one side. So if you're on a bed or a couch or something, uh, it's a little, little bit easier to manage than having things plugged in on both sides. Okay. I've got my old CR48 Chromebook to upload photos and videos from media devices like these glasses. Okay, now that it's plugged in, maybe it'll actually turn on. Definitely feels way better than the sharp edges, which actually gave me carpal tunnel on the first version of this thing. Uh, and the backlight is enough in and of itself to justify this upgrade, in my opinion. I can't believe there was no backlight on these earlier models. It's just absurd. And let's get out some screwdrivers. Sorry, there's not more light. I'm redoing my office. So, they got rid of the, the physical button for the Windows logo, looks like, and, nope, oh, wrong password, we'll connect to my phone, so the contender that I was looking at to this guy was the Dell XPS 11, which copies this form factor in its ability to flip over like this. But I found out that it doesn't have physical keys. It's a uh, same way that Microsoft Surface does it, which to me is just unacceptable for like a 
main mm -hmm. use laptop. Anyway, we will get past the boring stuff in like two seconds. I really do like this thing though. It feels way better, even though it's not that much, not actually that much heavier. Definitely feels way better. I don't can see my password on the phone. So the 13 inch models generally have better battery life than 11 inch because they have more physical space and generally pretty much the same hardware other, otherwise, other than the screen, obviously. Um, so should expect to get an actual eight hours plus from this thing. The 13 inch yoga, the original one only got maybe like six hours of use, if that. Um, so this might be kind of boring. So. Maybe we'll start hacking it apart while it's doing this. I guess I use that word liberally. I'm going to be unscrewing some screws. These are the Torx T5 screws. I do like the yoga a lot because one of the reasons is it's really easy to take apart. Maybe I'm just used to them now. These screws are difficult to find replacements of, so I do suggest putting them in a little container. As you mess with it. I wish I had a magnetic Tifa. <laughs> Maybe this one's magnetic. Definitely not my best work. Okay. Thank you. Come and help. Screws are out. So I open this one, this other one. Still taking care of a few things it says. So here we are, 2.3 gigahertz, the four gig base model, 50% power. And it's Windows 8.1, it looks like. So I don't actually, I haven't been reading up actually what that means. Um, I guess we have the start button here, which is, I guess going to appease a lot of people who couldn't deal with the Metro style for whatever reason. I, I was annoyed too, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. 
Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's for another video and uh, discussion topic. So it looks like we've got a new function key. This is probably the backlight. Yep. And otherwise, everything is the same layout as the original yoga. Brightness control. I don't remember if it went all the way off before. I think it did. Volume. The volume didn't get loud enough, in my opinion, on the first one. So maybe it will on this one. Ah, the default search and ate that one is everywhere. It was kind of annoying having to do Windows F and Windows W for different things instead of just searching everything. Media. Now hopefully this computer doesn't have crazy spyware from Lenovo. Um, apparently some machines were found to have weird backdoor access. Um, I'm going to have to look into that, but one of my friends refuses to buy Lenovo because of it. He's kind of paranoid, though. So I wanted to test out the speakers real quick. We'll do that. IE, I found, doesn't work nearly as well as Chrome, so you might want to install that immediately. Um, but you already knew that, obviously. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm picky. Okay. So it was the speaker test and the battery test, I guess. We've got 50% remaining. We're on, I think, nearly max brightness and 64% volume. This comes with a decent amount of bloat, I believe. Well, mostly because it has McAfee, which really annoys me. You have 80.6 gigs free. Okay. I think it's the same speakers as the original Yoga. It seems pretty loud now, but if you have a fan on and, I don't know, in bed or something, speakers are on the bottom. So if it's on like a pillow or something, it's obviously gonna muffle that a bit. All right, now let's take this thing apart and see if we can upgrade it. shut down first, which it does very quickly. So with the original Yoga, the next step after taking out all the screws is to pry up the keyboard. This one looks like it might be different though. So I'm going to just give it a little test here. Yeah, I think this one might be different. Nope. Same? OK. You need something kind of soft to pry it up, maybe like a credit card or I'm looking for my ruler that I like. Uh, don't use something metal. You'll scratch it. Let's 
is new, I think. See if I missed any screws. I'm wondering if there are any underneath these guys. Seems like there might be. Seems to be on there pretty, pretty well. Trying to flashlight in there. Definitely thinking there are some more screws that I can't see. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pry off those bottom feet. Seems to be the only place to hide some extra screws. As you can see, the paint is easy to peel off. So uh, again, don't use anything metal. All right, I guess it does just come off. I don't know why that was so difficult. So here we've got probably what, the Wi-Fi card? The Wireless N7260. The battery is lithium ion 7.4 volts, 7400 milliamp hours, 54 watt hour. The solid state is the normal M SATA form factor, so obviously you can upgrade that. But it looks like the RAM is soldered on, so you cannot upgrade it, which in this case is a deal breaker for me. That is very sad, although it's somewhat expected. So yeah, get the cheapest eight gig model you can find. Otherwise this thing seems pretty rocking. So I definitely get it if I were you. And uh, I really like that you don't have to take the keyboard off anymore to get to all of the main components. That's nice. But the only thing you're going to want to do in here anyway is the solid state. And again, you can't put in an SD card. So in terms of upgrading this, unfortunately, this new model is downgraded. But I think the backlight, the Haswell, the new form factor probably make up for it. So yeah, I think this is the Ultrabook convertible to buy of the hour and probably will remain so for the next couple months. Otherwise, if you want something cheaper, the 11S for $600 refurbished, fully upgradable, is definitely a good route to go. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.